When you open your bag, do you prefer a neatly organized system that's easy to navigate or a jumbled mess of creased clothing? If you're the former, then great, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Nathan from Pack Hacker, where we use our expertise and real world experience to provide practical resources and honest opinions, guiding you towards smarter travel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. There are hundreds of different packing cubes in all different shapes and sizes with tons of different use cases. So without further ado, let's get into it. Just before we jump right in, we should mention that this guide is also available in the written format over on packhacker.com. So make sure to check that out and we'll link it down in the description below. And while you're on Pack Hacker, why not check out all of our other reviews, packing lists and guides as well. First and foremost, packing cubes are used to organize the contents of your bag. However, they can also help with saving space as well as they compress your clothes together. There are even specific compression packing cubes that take this a step further, but we'll get into them a little bit later on. Now, if you haven't caught on by now, a packing cube is simply a fabric pouch with a zippered opening. And using one is pretty straightforward. You simply unzip the opening and put your clothes in. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. And it will also show you just how much stuff you can fit inside. Now, as an example, this here is an Eagle Creek Spectre Cube. It's one of our highest rated on packhacker.com. And this is their small size. And believe it or not, it's actually gonna fit five t-shirts, two pairs of boxes, and two socks. We recommend rolling your clothes as it's easier to organize them inside the cube and fill up all the space. Plus, they're less likely to crease this way too. As you can see, we already have five pre-rolled t-shirts here, so we're just gonna put them inside. Then because there's a little bit of space on top, we're gonna throw the boxes in here too, and then the two pairs of socks as well, and then we're just gonna zip it up. And there we have it, five t-shirts, two pairs of socks, and two pairs of boxes in one small-sized Eagle Creek Spectre Cube. Moving on, a typical example of how packing cubes can be used in the real world is you can use a small or an extra small cube here for your underwear and your socks. You can use a medium-sized cube for stuff like your t-shirts and your shorts. And then you can use a larger cube for sweaters and pants. It can really be that simple, but you can also get as creative as you'd like. For example, you can pack climate specific clothes in individual cubes. So you could put all of your cold weather gear into one cube and then all of your warm weather gear into another. And in a similar style to that, you could also put individual outfits in separate cubes as well. Additionally, you can also pick up different colored cubes, which will only go to help further organize your pack and you quickly knowing what is where. And on that note, we actually prefer packing cubes that are a different color to the inside of your pack. So if you've got a darker backpack inside, picking up lighter colored cubes is good as you can quickly see what's going on. But if you've got a backpack with like a bright orange interior or just a lighter color, then picking up darker packing cubes is really helpful on that note as well. Now this isn't essential, but it's a little hack that we like to do here at Pack Hacker. Finally, before moving into the different types of packing cubes you can buy, we have to talk about the variety of sizes, and there is quite a few. It's important to remember that packing cube sizes aren't universal. So one brand's small may be another brand's medium. So make sure to check all of the sizes of each cube before you buy them. And it's also important to consider just how much room you have to fill inside your pack. The last thing you wanna do is get a huge packing cube that's either wider or taller than the main compartment of your bag. Now, a little tip that we have is to go for smaller packing cubes so you can stack them on top of one another, put them side by side and fill up your main compartment that way, as opposed to getting like two large cubes. We'd recommend going for the medium and smaller size cubes and kind of doing it that way. We found that way helps a lot and will minimize the amount of lost space inside your main compartment. Apart from a few outliers like padded and weather resistant packing cubes that we do go into great detail on over at packhacker.com in our written version of this guide, the vast majority of packing cubes can be split up into three categories. 
We have an example of each here. And for the ultralight, we have the Osprey ultralight packing cubes. For the compression, we have the Peak Design packing cubes. And for budget, we have the IKEA for FINA packing cubes. And we'll be sure to link all of the reviews and product pages in the description below for each of these. Starting with ultra light, these are the lightest, obviously, and most minimal cubes around. They're typically made from 30 or 40D ripstop nylon, and they're great for when you want to minimize weight as much as possible and save space within your pack because of their minimal design. We have found that the thin fabrics used on these cubes can make them a bit slick, and while this helps with pulling them out, it also increases the possibility they will slide around inside your pack when in transit. Moving on to compression cubes, these things are for people who want to save as much room in their pack as possible. Every packing cube will compress items to a certain extent, but compression cubes take it to the next level. This is done by adding an additional zipper around the outside that can be zipped up to minimize the space inside, kind of like how a vacuum sealer works, and it's remarkable at how much a difference they can make. It is important to note though that there are a few cons that can come with this compression. Unfortunately, even if you roll your clothes super neat, it's more than likely they will crease a little inside this cube. And because of how they compress, the sides can become a bit rounded, meaning that they can be hard to stack on top of one another. Finally, we have budget cubes. Here at Pack Hacker, we tend to focus on high quality, good looking and extremely functional gear. But there are instances where going budget just makes sense. Perhaps you're only traveling for a month and don't need something that will last a lifetime. Maybe you're working on a limited budget and packing cubes are less of a priority than other more expensive gear you have to buy. Or maybe you're simply just not interested in all the bells and whistles of other packing cubes. Now it will come as no surprise that budget packing cubes aren't heralded for their durability. However, this doesn't mean that they'll all break within one week of your round the world trip. In fact, we've tested a set of Amazon Basics packing cubes for over a year of perpetual travel, and they're still going strong. While we can't guarantee that every budget packing cube will survive a year of everyday use, it is possible. On the other hand, they will take up more space inside your pack than compression packing cubes, and they will be heavier than ultra light packing cubes. Unfortunately, this is the trade-off for cheaper cubes, and it's a decision you'll have to make depending on your situation. If you're looking to save as much money as possible, then budget packing cubes may be the way to go. But if you're looking to save as much space in your pack as possible and weight, then ultra light packing cubes or compression packing cubes may be a better option. So we've talked about how to use packing cubes and the different types to choose from. However, there are still a few important considerations we have to talk about. First, the zippers. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get good zippers on your packing cube because there are a few things worse than a broken zipper. If you can find YKK zippers, then great. Just like this Osprey Ultralight packing cube has, as we've always had positive experiences with them. However, they won't always be available on cheaper cubes. So if you're on a budget, that's something you're gonna have to weigh up. A cheaper zipper doesn't always mean it's bad, but there is a greater risk of it breaking in the long run. Something else to consider when choosing packing cubes is just where the zipper is located and how the packing cube opens up. Generally, there are two options. A full clamshell style that opens up all the way, just like this Eagle Creek Spectre Tech Cube, and a half opening, which kind of comes down three quarters of the cube, like this Osprey Ultra Light Packing Cube. A clamshell style packing cube will give you direct access to the entire cube and enables you to place and position everything neatly. But we have found that it can be tricky to zip up if you're filling it to the brim. In contrast, a half opening style cube is a lot easier to cram a load of stuff into and zip up. 
but if you want to pull something out, you will likely have to take everything else out too. Both styles have their merits. However, we think that the clamshell opening, as long as it has two zippers, just about wins this one, as you can position the zippers to act like a half opening anyway. Next up, handles. Now, a handle is by no means a vital component on a packing cube, considering they're designed to be placed inside of a bag. But most manufacturers do include them. If they're done well, it's a nice feature that can add some useful benefits. But if not, they kind of get in the way and they're just a pain. Pointing out the obvious, a handle is helpful when grabbing hold of a packing cube. However, we've often found that most of the time, it's easier just to grab the whole cube with your hands. That being said, we have found a handle can be useful when you're lifting a cube out of a top loading backpack specifically. So if you're rocking one of those, you may want to make sure that your packing cube has a handle. In testing, we found handles that sit close to the packing cube to be the best, as they don't get in the way when not in use. But just remember that a handle isn't essential, and certainly don't discount cubes that have opted to not include one. And the final consideration is destination. The world is a big place, and choosing the right packing cubes will depend on where you're going and what you're doing. Most packing cubes will be fine for most destinations. However, there are some locations where certain styles of packing cubes will be better. If you plan on spending most of your time wandering along sandy beaches, then you may want to give mesh packing cubes a miss, as sand really can get everywhere. And the last thing you want is sand all between your neatly packed clothes in a packing cube inside of your bag. And if you're traveling to a humid location like Southeast Asia, breathable packing cubes are highly recommended. There are some high-tech materials available now, but simple mesh cubes will do the job as well, as these will help keep your clothes fresher for longer. So there we have it, our guide on how to use and choose the best packing cubes for travel. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below and any questions you may have. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.